Welcome everybody, I'm John Zadar and this is Tuesday, February 15th and you're watching On Top and Hot. Today we are taking a look at, well let's call it a rare stock. We are looking at first Tellurium, ticker G-O-D-Y-F on the OTC market in the U.S. On the CSE in the Canadian market is F-T-E-L. We're going to go take a look at this over at the OTC market first and then I'm going to share some information with you which is a little bit unique to say the least. So we're over here at the OTC market simply because the information is always current here. Why go running around the internet looking for stuff when most of that is outdated? This is updated every day by the SEC and FINRA. So there you go. So we are looking at G-O-D-Y-F first to let <laughs> tellurium why did they have to pick such a hard word it's actually a mineral on the chart so it's not their fault tellurium they finished the day at 0.2342 I hate to see all those extra digits behind full pennies because normally you got to bid through all of that Arr. they were about 17 percent down today they are on the pink tier they're current and well i don't see any more information here not bad or good well the lack of bad is good to see <laughs> so what does this company do well they don't have a lot of information here actually they don't have any this is a mining company they mine well as you would guess tellurium Oh, I'm going to have to say this so many times. Tellurium is what they mine. And this is a critical needed mineral that is more rare than gold. 800% less of it in the world than gold. And we have found a strong need for it and even another strong need for it. And I'm going to get to all that here in just a second. So what was the relative volume around this company today? We had some growth. We went from 339,000 to 436,000. Not a ton, but you know, everything grows in little spurts before it grows fast. What is their share structure? All right, they say they've got 61 million outstanding and they don't give us any information here about the float or even the unrestricted share count, which is where I would normally look. But I did do some Googling, sometimes you got to, and I found it is around 27, 28 million from the most current information I could find. So we're looking at just under 30 million on the float. What are their financials? Um, this is a foreign company out of Canada. A lot of times their filings will be found on that side of the market's information rather than on the U.S. So I don't think we're going to get anything here. Even probably their disclosures. Yeah, same thing. They're going to be over on the Canadian side. They can do it one way or the other. However, I've got some very good information. So we don't need this place no more. Over here... I have put together some very keen information which will tell us about tellurium. Now, of course, you've never heard of tellurium because, as I said, it's one of the rarest minerals on the planet. It is in abundance out in the galaxy and the universe, but for some reason, the Earth's crust got only three parts to one billion parts on the planet. That is very minute and we have great uses for it. As a matter of fact, our solar panels are primarily made with this as the solar photovoltaic cell membrane. Without this, we couldn't do it. Now we do use silicone and silica, but it's more expensive process, believe it or not. So this stuff has had great value here recently and it's in very small quantities on the planet. Now, just to give you an example, lithium just came into real big surges because of the EV market. We've had lithium batteries for a while, but they were small lithium batteries. Now we got these big things in cars and cars are just getting more and more and more. So we need more lithium. Well, Lithium has already started surging and they predict it will be at $115 billion by 2030. Now, just this last year, 12 months, lithium has gone up over 400% in value. And just this year alone, it's gone up over 320%. Lithium, you know, that's not exactly a rare earth metal and it is flying. Now, you want to talk about a rare earth metal as a good example, palladium. If you've never heard of palladium, most haven't. They found a use for it a few decades ago. It 
disperses heat much better than any other metal. It was going for about $350 an ounce back then. Well, then all the car manufacturers jumped onto it. They coated all their little ball bearings inside a catalytic converter with them. And boom, the price went over the price of gold and continued to go up near $25, $2,800 from $350. And to this day, it is still roughly $2,000 an ounce. And this is what they are thinking is probably going to happen with terillium. See, the situation is right now we produce about 500 metric tons a year. And it's really what we use. That is it. And we don't even mine it. Most of this is coming as a byproduct from refining gold and copper. Wherever you find gold, copper, and silver, you normally find this stuff in minute amounts. So it's sitting over there in the mud. And that has been enough for us to pretty much work with. But things are changing. It isn't going to work anymore. And beyond that, 60% of everything the world gets, as I said, is only 500 metric tons. 60% of that is in control by the Chinese. And anything can disrupt that flow. That could be tightened down, cut off, made too expensive, anything. So right now, it is already a perilous situation because the need for it, it is getting bigger. Now, not only are we using it for solar panels, we were using silicone that's more expensive. This is cheaper, believe it or not. But they've also just had a major breakthrough where they found that this tellurium in a small thin with lithium can make our batteries last four times longer. Literally, they tell us down here that the, the, the material doesn't just help the batteries last 400% longer, but helps them hold a charge for longer. They charge faster and they can even help disperse the heat. And that is just starting right now. A group of uh, scientists over in Singapore have already started doing this. And not just with lithium batteries, but metal batteries as well. Copper batteries, zinc batteries. They are finding a little layer of this stuff makes the battery work better. But the biggest deal, the biggest point is first solar, which is the, I don't know if it's the world's, but it's definitely the United States biggest solar panel producer and seller in the country. And they've been producing just about one gigabyte of solar panels a year. Now they tell us you need eight grams of tellurium for every two by four foot panel. So they say first solar needs about a hundred metric tons for every gigabyte that they do. Well, they had just kicked out last year a $680 million new project in Ohio where they're gonna produce 3.3 gigawatts. They have exceeded what we produce. We need more now. The, the, the panels are going to be produced at a larger rate. Batteries are now gonna need it. All of a sudden, there is a critical mass problem here. So this is where this company comes in. And the story continues with First Solar here. It's quite interesting as a matter of fact. It is in Colorado that this company just got the Klondike Tellurium Silver Gold property. This is over in Sagusha County, Colorado. Now right there, that star is where they are at. 68 miles away is the famous, what are they called? Cripple Creek. Cripple Creek Gold Mines, which has already produced over 23 million ounces of gold. This is only 68 miles away. And just a couple years ago, they produced $530 million worth of gold. Now, everywhere that gold, silver, and copper is, there is tellurium. Well, if you're mining tellurium, there is going to be gold, copper, and silver. So this company is actually going to have a byproduct of those products, even though they're after the tellurium. Now, this Klondike project is the very first dedicated tellurium mine in the U.S. And as far as I know, there's a second one trying to open, but hasn't happened yet. And most mines aren't even getting the option to open because of a lot of stuff Biden's done. So things are getting tight down here. Now, there's a story behind this property. This property we already know is valuable from a lot of information. The first of it being it used to belong 
to First Solar. That's right, First Solar, ticker FSLR, owned that mine. They owned the property. They were going vertical. They weren't going to just be producing their own solar panels. They were going to mine the tellurium they needed to put in them. Well, <laughs> as great as that sounded, as cheap as it would have been, and how much money they would have made and saved, the investors would have no part of it. They seen it as contrary to the green global image that the company had, ripping apart the earth to get your stuff. They didn't like it. So the company had to sell it. And they got rid of it, and a third party bought it, and this company has just bought it from them. So it is now theirs. And the most important thing is what they discovered about this property. Why did First Solar want it? Because it is one of the richest tellurium areas ever found so far. This is, remember I told you in the beginning, this had a three part to one billion on this planet. There are three parts to one billion. That's how rare it is. They say the surface exploration has found that the ground holds as much as 3% tellurium. To give you a clear picture of what that means, 3% of a ton is 60 pounds. So for every ton of earth and rock that they move, they get 60 pounds of tellurium. Now what's the difference? Well that right there is 3%. 1, 0, 0. This is, I don't know what you call that, <laughs> that is 3 of a billionth. That's how much is normally found in the earth. This area has that three over the 100%. Huge difference, it is large. But here's the kicker and the bonus. They're looking for tellurium, but they're gonna get gold and silver as well. They tell us here that for the amount of dirt that they move, one ton, they will get 33 grams or an ounce and a half of gold for every ton. Now, it's not a great, but that's a prediction. We know that the Cripple Creek is doing a lot more than that. We know that gold is a byproduct, so they're, they're, they're going to have that, and it's going to be extra revenue. Revenues, they're not even counting into any of their projections. To go even one step further, they have a property called Deerhorn up in Canada, British Columbia. I think it's bigger than the one here in the USA. I mean, for the same exact stuff, top grade uh, tellurium, gold, and silver. They tell us here that there is as much as 93 metric tons of tellurium up there and holds as much as 100 ounces of gold and 3 million ounces of silver. So this company has got two very rich tellurium mines that can produce staggering amounts that can change the balance of the market into, well, the Western Hemisphere's advantage so that we don't have to depend on it from the Eastern Hemisphere. Now, there's one other thing that you should know is that they have a company that they've been working with for a long time as their research and development company. This is Phoenix. Phoenix is doing that research on the tellurium being mixed with lithium batteries, copper batteries, zinc batteries. They're doing all sorts of stuff. And that is part of their business. So it's not like it's been tossed at the wind and someone else is working with it. This is also part of their business so that they could actually come up with a patent and some sort of better battery through all of this development. And I got this page off of a PDF, a presentation this company has just put out here in February. I mean, it's fresh off the press. I still got ink on my fingers from downloading it. Seriously, just go there first to, oh, I hate saying this, first tellurium.com and you'll see that they've just put up a brand new PDF and they've got lots of good information, easily written and understandable. G-O-D-Y-F on T-O-S. That's Think or Swim. You need a free trading platform? This is your baby. Just go over to TD Ameritrade, sign up. They don't need any money even to trade. You don't even actually have to trade with them. Just keep your account open and you can use Think or Swim just like I am. So this is a six month, four hour chart for G-O-D-Y-F. She has had a couple highs here at roughly a dollar had another 60 and a 50 cent jump here. Started way back here at two cents and is currently at 24 cents. Has been pretty much above the 200 the entire time. Really hasn't 
come ab below that, even on her worst days. And she's got a solid floor right there. I mean, for goodness sake. You can see where her strongest support is. Yeah, not a problem there. Looks like she wants to come down to that again. She does it, she does it over and over, but she rarely, if ever, comes down below it. So at this point in time, you see that the 200 is getting closer and closer and closer. And right now, the support and the 200 are coming together, which makes this even stronger could even be flexible, could get a bounce out of this. But we're looking at this for a long run, aren't we? At some point, the world's gonna figure out what tellurium is. And at some point, prices are going to change. And when prices change, what this company has will become a serious commodity. Everybody's gonna want it and only so many can get it. Yeah, so the price could seriously run. You could see these jumps again. And as I said, we're down to just under 25 cents right now. I would expect her to come down and at least probably hit that support, hit that, and do another bounce. And if they get some news out, for bloody sake, put some news out, folks. Get a press agent out there. Yeah, these, uh, these people will probably get some good action because they don't have a lot of competition. They've got the goodies and the whole world is going to want a piece of it. So probably best price you're going to get is down there at about uh, 21 cents, just around there. But the best price it ends up at, your guess is as good as mine. Look at palladium, look at lith lithium, look at any rare mineral. They're all important and needed. And this one's rare. So basically, you got six reasons that you really need to consider this. Now, I'm not much of a man that invests in mines, but I do like rare opportunities. And I can see the potential here. And not just from what I've shown you, but from what is laid here. A private exclusive deal. With its vocarious appetite for tellurium now public, it's hard not to imagine that first solar or any other company for that matter, would not want to make a domestic supply of tellurium right here. Why they wouldn't make a contract? I mean, come on now. If First Solar had this property already and were kind of forced to sell it and they know that that area is rich in exactly what they need, don't you think they're probably going to be the first customer on this company's list? I mean, <laughs> Why would you go through a middleman and have to pay more? So I can definitely see something about ready to happen there. Just common sense. Demand will likely outstrip supply. First Solar's plan could, by itself, more than double the world's demand for tellurium from 500 tons a year to 1,000 or 1,100 tons a year. And that's very possible. The more solar panels we start making, the more of this we find we can put in batteries. They also use it on DVDs, CDs, and other thermal electric devices. And there's only so much of it. That's the whole point. The more of these devices we make, the more of this we need. And solar panels are being made. You know, that is really a huge, huge market right now. Come for the terillium. Klondike has tested a fantastic 3% terillium content, way more than the usual three parts per billion. And based on the PEA done on June 218, that represented only 20% of the known property zones. And the Deerhone property is noted, geologists reported a potential of 93 tons of tellurium. So there is a lot there, but that's what they're saying. Come for the terillium, but stay for the gold. Mm. Folks, this is, it is really a crapshoot. We don't know how much gold they're, they're going to find because the two go hand in hand. And normally they're just looking for the gold and you end up with the tellurium. And I don't know what the ratio is from those mines, but it seems to me if they're mining just the gold, leaving the tellurium, there must be enough gold there to make a good hefty gain. So I think they're getting like two for the price of one here. I think they probably see it that way too. While tellurium is the target of the opportunity, first tellurium is sitting on published high-grade precious metals in British Columbia and high-grade assays in Colorado. That's a hell of a bonus. 
Those are their words. I did quote them. <laughs> the China syndrome, definitely one not to be overlooked. China controls 93% of the world's rare earth metals, such as tellurium. They've got 60% of that. It's time North America broke that grip. First, tellurium could be part of that solution. Well, if they're the only one here in America, and even if they're not the only one, if the one in Utah does open, when you got 3%, when you're getting 60 pounds for every ton that you move, not to mention the gold, I mean, that is a lot of tellurium here locally. That doesn't have to be shipped. That doesn't have to come through customs or be negotiated with. It's here, ours to use. And the last one we got here, if it comes down to leverage, Word of first tellurium's massive potential could be due to come out soon. I couldn't find any news to really share with you. I had to come digging around through articles and put this together. News of more efficient, stronger, longer lasting battery won't stay quiet for long. And that's the truth of it here, folks. This is under the radar by a lot of measures. They're not putting out news. There's not a lot of press about this. Um, nobody knows what tellurium is. Surely they don't know that it's eight times more precious than gold, at least by uh, quantity on the planet. There's more gold than there is this stuff. So this could easily, well, I don't know what it's actually going for an ounce right now. I guess I could have looked that up, but I got to leave some DD for you. But consider what palladium did surpass the price of gold. And if this is already in less quantity of gold, who knows how much this could be worth? And what was it? It Well, boy, we don't want it to get too high because they need eight grams for every two by four foot solar panel. And eight grams is roughly one third of an ounce. 27 grams is an ounce. So you don't want it to get too high because those solar panels start getting expensive. What a conundrum. Holy cow. So remember folks, this is a company that is under the radar, just starting, and you heard it here first. We're gonna need this stuff, and it's rare. So check out G-O-D-Y-F on the OTC markets, or F-T-E-L on the C-S-E, First Terillium Corp. Remember, DD's a good thing. The more you know, the more you're gonna grow. Pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-pa-